Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to review a very basic web server from what we just learned. Now, we didn't learn very much, of course, so this is not going to be very much, but let's put this a little bit in practice and we'll just take baby steps learning about this, okay? First, you have to import Dart.io. So Dart.io is necessary to open up streams as well as access files on the desktop or on your hard drive. Um, because remember, if you did HTML, you cannot access information directly on your hard drive. It just stays locally on the browser. So Dart.io, main async. So you know we're going to be creating futures, okay? So there's a const port 880. So we're going to use the port 880, and we're going to use a internet address. So what's the internet address? Internet address, I guess I didn't go over that in the last video. It's um, generally when we think of an internet address, we talk about a URL, Uniform Resource Locator. That's the www dot whatever. Okay, that's what that actually is. So in this case, again, we're going to open up a local web server. So we're not going to go across the internet. We're just going to go locally here. So it's going to be at this port, and it's going to be at this local address. So remember, internet address, loop back. So it's going to not go out to the internet, loop back using the IP version, internet protocol version 4 system. Okay. Now notice I put const port um, or final. You can either use const or final for, for the port. Final, I think you have to use final right here. Now, if I have a web server that's open, I don't want this port changing very much, right? So you, if somebody's connected to you, you don't want to all of a sudden have 8081 out of nowhere. So you want to make sure this does not change at all whatsoever, okay? Now, if you stop the program and then you change it and then you ran it, you could do that. But while the program is running, you don't want this to change at all. So we do need to make these either const or final. In this context, it means the same thing. Now, we talk about HTTP. HTTP server. Now that's the um, news type that we're talking about. Request server obviously is just the variable, but HTTP server is the op is the type for the object here. And this object is going to either, like we talked about before, remember, it's going to either receive a request or it's going to send a response, right? So this is the web server. You're going to get the browser sent to receive a request or you're going to send a response back. And we use the await, of course. Um, for HTTP server dot bind because we need to do this. I have this HTTP server. Okay, so I have this web server and I need to actually tell you where bind where to actually open up the address and where is the port. So this would be localhost or as I mentioned before, it could be 0 0.0.0.0 point zero point zero point zero four zeros. Um, or it could be 127.0.0.1. Any of those things would probably work on most computers. This is the local host on the drive, and then there's the colon port. So it just tells you this is where your web server is located on, this is where your stream is located on your system. Then I'm just going to print here listening on local host and what port we're actually on. And now we have an await for. Now, hang on a second. So we have an async, which is a future. We don't have the colon, the, the uh, asterisk here. But w then we have await, and then we have await for. Well, HTTP server actually is a stream type. So it's of type stream. The reason why we use await here, I'm thinking, is because this is not a stream that you want to attach to this. A stream is an ongoing thing. A future is a one-time thing, right? This binding is a one-time thing, right? You just bind it and you're done. Kind of set it and forget it. This thing right here, this object, now you can use it as a stream though afterwards. So it's a little bit confusing in that sense, but at the same time, now I think I can understand why I have async without the asterisk. It's plain async because you're dealing with futures, but this type is built in happens to be a stream. So what do you do with streams? Well, stream is a wait for. So if a stream was an await, you would have one request. You sent one request, you send back a response, and you're all done. But then your web server would be over, right? But that's not a good thing. You want it to be ongoing. So if somebody sends a thousand requests, request server is going to have a thousand different values to it, right? Uh, values meaning um, requests, different requests to this particular server. If um, so, so that's why we make sure that HTTP server, we don't do this, the 
programmers of Dart did this, made this a, 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 a stream. So you await for streams, and this is just the, uh, again, this is a loop. So um, this is type, this is an iterable, right? So it's, it's it, um, you can have multiple different values because, again, it's a stream. And the request, this variable, the HTTP request, it iterates through the values. So if you have a request from a browser, sends a request, it gets inside of here, and we this is the value of that particular request. All right? I hope that's clear in terms of why this is in a wait for, because it confused me for a while. Now we have the request right here, and what do we do? Well, we mentioned we have a client that sends a request, and the, the server sends a response. So request dot, what are you going to do with that? Response dot write. So we're using a cascade here, though. So response dot request dot write, and we're going to write hello to the browser. So I receive a request. Oh, by the way, that connection. I get my browser. I connect it here. That's sometimes called a handshake. That can have different meanings, but it, it's a connection. Then once I get connected, I receive a request simply saying it's connected. Then I send the response, hello world, and then we, we close it. I'll talk about that in a second. So what happens? Let's run the system. Listening on localhost 8080. Let's just use Chromium. And it says, hello world. Okay, that's all we're really doing. Localhost connects, sends message back. But so, and now this particular thing is closed. The reason why you close it is because if you have ongoing streams, that can be a problem, right? Because you're going to be using up a lot of memory and a lot of uh, resources for the system. So it'll just be going on and on. That can be a major problem. If you have 500 connections, 500 co connections are still open. This opens, sends the message, and it closes. But wait a minute. Let's open up. Remember, we can use Firefox too. So I can get this. And I could say local host 8080. That says hello world also. And wait a minute. If I do this also, I could get multiple hello worlds here. So close does not mean you close everything. It simply means you close this particular request, right? So I send every time I renew it, refresh it, I send a new request. So that particular request is the thing that closes, not the entire web server itself. So that, that should be very, very clear. We, we want to make sure that that's clear because it's one of those things where um, request.close, you would think, well, wait a minute, maybe I don't want to close the server. You're not closing the server. I don't know what I'm doing here, actually. Oh, there we go. Um, I don't, I don't, um, you shouldn't be closing the server. You're actually just closing this particular request. So I think that's a good summation of what we learned in the previous video on how to open up a very basic web server. And let's keep going from there, okay? So um, let me think if there was anything else that I wanted to review. No, I think that was it. Oh, by the way, real quickly, I can change this. And I will, oh, there is a couple of things. Number one, look at this. So this is still going. In previous videos, we hit run, right? And it would run and it would finish. This is an open stream. It's still going on, all right? So we have to actually stop it, and then we have to rerun it again if we want to make sure that, that it goes. So you can't just hit run again because you can't run it more than once. You have to stop it, that button right here, and then rerun it, okay? Um, and if we refresh this, what's going to happen? It's going to do hello because you're sending a new request, and you're sending a new response, and then you close it again, all right? Thanks a lot.